Welcome to today's event, which is being hosted at Maureen's Bar with Kimling, Morris and Maureen. Um, I am going to hand straight over to Kim Ling, who is going to explain a little bit about the event. Kim Ling. Well, uh, we've decided to do secret secret notes or secret end notes. Um, so I'm here in this lovely, lovely jewel of a bar called Maureen's, um, belonging to Maureen. And um, it's it's tiny little place, really, really cosy and, and, and encouraging, I would say, is the other thing about the space. Beautiful. Uh, here in Cork in Ireland and um, we had uh, I had wanted to do something where people could contribute uh, content really to go into the pieces so I put in I don't know whether you can see that a secret notes box and I was actually very surprised at the number of people that um, it's both sides I think yeah So we said, post me here, um, and we had a, a really good response. So I haven't opened them yet. Um, and what we're going to do is look at them. It's just a, uh, a conversation about the content, and I'll be sort of tearing into the secrets and stitching into them. And they're going to, I'm going to hang them on here so that uh, they can become part of my piece. And uh, while I'm stitching and working, Maureen will provide some notes. <laughs> so it's just some notes for the notes. So for the notes. notes for the notes. So, I don't know what they're going to be like. I'm, I'm sort of a bit afraid that somebody might actually be confessing to murder or something like that <laughs> in here. So. <laughs> well, most of those notes will be from people who have had a drink or so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> They might have been looking at the box all night. Do you want build, to, building up do you want to pick the first one? Will I pick the first one? Pick the first one. Okay. Oh, it's a long one. Oh. What does it say? 2009. I met my love while living with him. It was short lived. It wasn't until, until 2020 lockdown when we reconnected and now we're happily married to get, uh, happily together for three years. I love him and quit my job to leave Cork and rejoin him. I'm the happiest I've ever been. Don't forget to always be happy for yourself, whatever it takes. Oh, oh. <laughs> I think we about that because we were <laughs> moved to Cork we did. before we yeah, lost. No, it's true. It's like, I, 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 I'm trying not to think of who that could be. Um, I think I probably need to, yeah, just yes, take, I, take I, I won't be thinking about room. that because I'm going to be taking out the heart of that. I think we need some romantic music. Do you have anything that's romantic or happy? Um, also, Maureen, don't forget that some of these confessions are coming from across the seas from Lanzarote, so you might not yes. know these oh, people. Oh, yeah. yeah. But, but the one... They're all in the box there. So oh, we're does seeing... the Lanzarote ones go in the box as well? Absolutely, okay. yeah. I, I printed them out. Post them up and put them in there. Yeah, but they won't be on the same paper, so we'll be, no, able, to, different we'll paper. be able to tell which is which. So, Maureen, I guess, like, where were you living at the time when you, you moved to come here to Cork? Um... I was living in Stratford, Ontario, and I it was my ex-husband's hometown, and I moved there for a short period of time, and I ended up being there for 20 years, and my parents ended up retiring there, and my sister and her family ended up moving there. So when it came time to decide whether Dennis would come to Ireland or come to Canada or I would go to Ireland, I came here. Yeah, I, so I was living in Paris at the time, yeah. and uh, I think we, we had argued about it for, well not argue, but discussed it I suppose, for five years, and then decided, um, look, you know, I think it actually came down to, you know, being closest to one set of families, parents, or the other, and I'm kind of glad we made that decision in the end. Mm. Um, because it was nice to be close to Kieran's family um, 
when they're at the end of their lives. So I wonder how far this person's actually traveled. Well, what did she say? Uh, what does the stitched part say actually? That'd be interesting. The stitched what part that? says, with him until 2020, reconnected, happily together three years and quit and rejoin. That's, mm. that's what's in the stitched part, which is nice. There's a sort of like a real sense of ebb and flow in that relationship, isn't there? Yeah, there is. But I'm just wondering why that would be her secret. Maybe she just wanted to put a positive secret in. But maybe yes. she just doesn't talk about that. And maybe a lot of people don't realise that's what's happened to her, that she's, you know, she's met the same person a little while back. Yeah. You no. Know? Mm. But it is a very romantic secret. Mm. That's why she's done it on pink paper as well. <laughs> so how are you, that's just a simple stitch. It's a blanket stitch. Yeah. So I like it because um, in some ways, it's almost like good for drawing. Mm. You know, it has an emphasis to it. And I like the rhythm of the stitch as well. Mm. So I think this one is nearly finished. Here it is. First secret up on there. On today's performance. We've got to set something. Hang on a second. Um, just letting you know that I have enabled captions and we have um, got them on translate. So you can have your subtitles in Spanish or English. So if you are joining us from Lanzarote and you would like to be hearing the conversation in Spanish, if you go to the more options and click on captions, um, then you will be able to see everything that's happening right in front of you in Spanish. Yeah, hablo poquito español for, for the people over in Lanzarote. Hola, caracola. Do you speak another language as well? I, I don't. And that's one of the many things that I feel <laughs> ashamed of, which is useless, but I don't. Oh, there's I, many people that don't speak yeah, another I language. Can, I can understand. I can understand French because French is the second official language in Canada. Oh, of course it is. Yeah. So I would have studied French, but um, but yeah, I don't. I can't, I don't have any confidence speaking it. Well, it's different when you learn school language. I think yeah. anybody would tell you, like, you learn at school and it's just such a drag at school that yeah. it is difficult to do anything of it after. Now, I suppose I'll pick out one of the ones that are printed. Yeah. I am ambidextrous and sometimes confused left and right up. I have a good hint for that. If you hand hold up your hands like this, yeah, the hand that's making the L is your left hand. Ah, yeah. that's that's handy. Yeah, that's this is saying. handy. <laughs> <laughs> it's handy unless you have dyslexia, and then you just get more confused because both hands look like an ah, L. Ah, both hands are yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, one of my best friends together. has this problem she kept being told at school like yeah but it's really easy just do this and she was like no but I don't understand what an L looks like that's part yeah. of the problem <laughs> I think what is it possible Kim to have people be able to join the conversation oh absolutely because everyone looks like they're on mute but I don't know maybe Sarah Jane that's not absolutely yeah, everyone has the possibility to mute and unmute themselves. So if you want to join in the conversation, um, if you are on a laptop or on a tablet, in the bottom left-hand corner, there should be a little like microphone button. If you click on this, then it will mute and unmute you. Um, and so if you want to speak, then please do unmute yourself. And then once you are finished, perhaps mute yourself again just to um, stop any background noise coming through and interfering with the, the lovely tunes that are coming from Maureen. Oh, you could try playing a left-handed. There's a, there's a real handedness to playing a, um, a mandolin. I definitely couldn't play the other way. 
No, I couldn't. I could. I playing left-handed. Yeah. And how how would it be playing left-handed? I don't. I I can't even figure out how that would work. <laughs> yeah. Is that funny? How like you get that sort of um that physical memory. Yeah. That is so ingrained that you actually can't um you can't when you're playing you're not thinking about it you're actually thinking about the, the music or you're thinking about the notes or you're yeah. thinking about the, the structure of the phrase yeah and not necessarily actually um about your fingers and things I suppose that's like driving you know where you well I feel like I actually do do like I I, I think that I learn I'm learning a tune by just the the pattern of my fingers so that's how I learn the tune yeah hmm but Perhaps I you're a kinesthetic you learner. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you're a kinesthetic learner, someone that learns by like moving and doing rather than looking or listening. Yeah, I know. Oh, I didn't know there was a term for that. Yeah. Yeah, there's terms for all sorts of, um, there's like four main ones, but there are like various theories on different learning styles. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Most artists are either visual or kinesthetic and the same for musicians and other creatives. They tend to either be, um, yeah, doing it by looking and being visually stimulated or doing it by doing, you know, like learning it by doing. I um, it's surprising that a lot of musicians actually don't appear to be auditory learners, which I think is really interesting. Mm, that's really interesting. I've just been learning this for two years. I picked it, I got it as... I got a secondhand mandolin when I turned 50 um, from somebody who builds mandolins. And then last year when I turned 52, I got one of he I, I got one of his mandolins. And his name is Alton Walsh. And he um has an organic farm called Gortlinane outside of Cork. So if you were to just Google Alton Walsh or if you're interested, he builds bazookis and mandolas. And they are beautiful. Like they're you super, know, you can see the detail of that. Yeah, it's just, just gorgeous. So does, where does he get the wood from? Is it local wood or is it? Uh... Yeah, this, this, this particular piece is lace wood and there's a suburb of uh, Cork City called Glanthon and this piece of wood came down in a big storm there in 1996. Whoa. So yeah, but he's, uh, yeah, he's, he's a bit of a genius and I'm not really worthy of this, this, this piece. It's a real heirloom piece. I think we should we should we should be the judges of that. I think your, your playing is very good. Well, talking of which, my little piece of wire is not sitting and doing as it's told. Come, come, come. Do you think at some point, Maureen, you could bring the um, mandolin a little bit closer to the camera so that everyone could have a little bit of a look? Yes, I'll do that right now. I love to show off my mandolin. I bring it down into the bar all the time. So there's Alton's. Uh, yeah. Wow, it's so beautiful. And so I love that there's that story behind it as well. Yeah, and then I'll show you the back. Oops. Oh, it's so Gorgeous. shiny. We can see the reflection of the computer in the back of it. I, I, it's true. That's the French polishing. Wow. Yeah, there's, there's the reflection. <sighs> Yeah, you can see what's going on. It'd be like one yeah. of those NCIS things where, you know, like from the reflection of a photograph, you can see so something else that's happening. They zoom in a gazillion times and you can see the face of, of the culprit in the reflection yeah. of the guitar. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to. Oh, no, it's your turn. Is it? Yeah, it's your turn. Okay. I've slept with two moirid women. What does that mean? Married women, I think. Oh. <laughs> well done, you. <laughs> Let's put the little yellow thing on there. But he could have he could have been married to them twice. He could actually have been married to them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you slept with, uh, have you had an affair? I'd say what stays in the bedroom stays in the bedroom. <laughs> Putting Kim Ling on the spot immediately. <laughs> Kim didn't want to read out anything that would be too, uh, 
too naughty. Yeah, yeah. Family, family. Yeah. Family friendly. Family friendly. Family family friendly. friendly. Yeah. It's a family show. Family yeah, show. yeah. And we weren't quite sure because there were a few people that were just so intrigued with it. And like, it was kind of like a buildup of a week. Like, will I put a secret in? Won't I put a secret in? <laughs> and there was the option to put it into an envelope. And if it was in the envelope, then it would be it wouldn't be open I just saw it without actually opening without, it, opening, without opening reading it what's up. going on there so there are a couple of envelopes in here but one person said oh no no I, I didn't mean to put it in the envelope you could take it out but now I don't know which one it was so <laughs> it will be forever a secret it will be indeed yeah but that's the thing about secrets I've been surprised at sort of like how many people actually want to write anything in there and I'd like pleasantly surprised as well yeah it sort of tells you that um there's a need to say these things did yeah. you ever see that film um in the mood for love no and uh there's basically two people in a boarding house and uh in the 50s and they both liked each other yeah. but they didn't they didn't do anything about it until it was too late and um, they both sort of whispered, it's that thing of tell it to the tree, mm. we whisper it to a little gap in the tree so that the tree can hold your secret. Aww. And you think like, oh, that's so sad. They should have acted upon their, their emotions really. Sometimes I guess that goes back to your first, yeah. um, first card really. Yeah. That's funny about the gap in the tree because I was thinking this morning about time and how and where to find time you know we talk about finding the time or carving out the time yeah so then I was thinking about well if you carve out time where are you carving it and I was thinking just carving a little gap in a tree and finding some time in there <laughs> <laughs> that'd be lovely yeah. so the tree fairy would be most <laughs> niche, but like yeah. yeah um I did have a I did have an, I did have an affair kind of but I was very honest about it immediately. And I said, you know, we have to, we have to split up because I'm going, and, and like, yeah, you're not going to pay, pay attention. That's a move on. Ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nothing, nothing, no harm wanted, but yeah. time to move on. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. sometimes that's the time. That's just the way it is. Mm. No, I like you know with consenting adults like this I have no personal judgment mm. so. but it is hard for the emotions as like you know if one feels differently to the other there's nothing more difficult than unrequited emotion so anyway it's a very pretty yellow and all it says is two two noir ma noir yeah. And it's omens. Worried, worried. That's funny. The D's gone, but I've got omens. I've got omens. There. I'm not sure why, but we can only hear the mandolin really clearly when you're talking. I'm not sure why that could be. Like um, now, because I'm talking, I can hear it. But when there was that little moment of silence, I could see you moving your fingers, but it wasn't coming oh, through the speaker. Is there a speak, speaker activation that's maybe not activating? Maybe. maybe. Yeah. Will I pull that forward a little bit and see? Yeah. So let us know if this works any better. Yes, that is coming through a bit clearer now, yeah. Great. So I am going to go for I think blue ones. No green. I've got a green. Um. <laughs> I'm not going to say names. He says uh, the person said he wrote that he wrote that song uh, Cecile on the piano. Could he not find any paper? <laughs> That's more of a joke than a confession, but I like it. What is it? Um, oh, said, oh, no, no, oh, no, 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 but that that's... song Cecile on the piano. Could you not find any paper? That's, that's, that's a good very part. funny. I know who that is because there was a, the first the first night we put the box in, there was um, a beautiful um, 
there was it was an acoustic circle night so there were three singer songwriters each in a different um corner of the room and they were taking turns playing and then everybody was kind of filling in between them it was it was so gorgeous and someone thought that the notes were all about the performance so they thought it was part of that night so he put in about four so that oh, well. was that was one of them yeah but that's, that's nice fine. it's there I, yes I like it being there anyway I like it being there too but it's not as juicy you know yes but we've got Cecile on the P yeah okay. said he said so he. that'll that'll do us very nicely thank you yeah Oh, whoever it was, thank you. Yeah. Then if you haven't got any piano music, hmm? we'll have to have mandolin music. Mandolin. <laughs> I think that's a happy mandolin one. A happy mandolin one. Um, you know, see, like, this is, I have, I have a secret to confess that, like, honestly, I don't, I feel really uncomfortable playing because uh -oh. and I don't want it but I just I have to I if it if there's there's no I'm pressure. just I'm just oh. <laughs> <laughs> see I didn't know it was going to be on YouTube until right before and then and then that made me really so like I, it's been kind of a struggle yeah that's my secret I'm letting it out I should, should, I should, I should write it down right now can I stitch into it paper? yes yeah the paper's over there yeah I have to find that but yeah, you don't know what's going to turn up in Maureen's because like there are lots of performances, sing, singing performances and things, um, musicians of various sorts. Um, so it's actually a really lovely little spot to be coming to. And just around the corner from my place as well, which is jolly handy. So sometimes I don't even have to come in, I can hear the music. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> yeah, it's really nice. It's, it's a true. gentle sort of playing. Just if I have the window open, and you have the band sort of close to the back here. I can I can just about catch it if I'm sort of quiet at home. Okay, what's what should my secret be? <gasps> that you <laughs> are horrified at being on YouTube. Yeah, like I feel like I'm having a panic attack actually. Um Hi everybody. <laughs> <laughs> we love you, Maureen. <laughs> Thanks, Rosie. <laughs> you know what? Maureen has been an absolute angel for me over the past few weeks and months because I'm going through chemotherapy at the moment. And she just keeps showing up and giving me lifts everywhere and cooking me amazing food and just generally being. An angel. Yes, an angel shouldn't be shouldn't be worried about <laughs> being on YouTube. They shouldn't, and absolutely also, not. You know, it's, it's a good okay. place for angels. Yeah, exactly, and it's okay that it's okay that she is. Yeah, um, are you feeling any better? Me. Yeah. <laughs> um. I'm pretty, I'm pretty rough, but I'm better than I was a few days ago. Yeah, I heard I heard it's like difficult. It's difficult. It's a difficult time. Yes. It's yeah. like a hangover, a constant hangover without the high. <laughs> That's rotten. That really is. It's a balls. And it's Rosie's second time through it in like two years. And she's just amazing, honestly. Rosie Lawler, beautiful musician, beautiful healer, and a beautiful friend, and such a source of light. And I feel enlightened being around Rosie. So it's just a privilege <laughs> to be around you, Rosie. Oh. I support you. I love you. I love you too. And you see, we talk about the light, the panic goes. Yes, it's true. <laughs> Rosie's seen me have a panic attack before. <laughs> there's no we've all well, i think we all have our own it. versions of panic attacks yeah <laughs> yes yeah. More secrets then yes, More secrets. Will be. It'll okay. Be okay right we've got a nice it's like washing it it's like hanging them on the washing line it's sort of like it's almost like cleansing the secrets there or something can i read this one do 
At one stage, I worried my love for you had a limit, that everything about you, the things I love, had faded, and I wouldn't be able to see you the same way again. Mm. That's beautiful. Mm. Wow, and it ends on a cliffhanger. I feel like, it like well, does. what happened? <laughs> it really does. That's amazing. And they're beautiful. I feel like I'm tearing up and stitching into poetry. Yeah. But that stage has passed. So I wonder what stage is he or she or they? They. The do safest, they, yeah, the, the safest, the safest term. term. Yeah. Why did, I, why did I automatically think he? Maybe the writing? Mm. I don't know. Mm. But yeah, it's like anything else. How long is it all supposed to last? Yeah. Like if you do well, it lasts longer. <laughs> I like the way it's on blue as well because you've got the, the they have got the blues. Really nice. Playing the mandolin, did you say? Two, almost three years. You don't very well. I'm supposed to have played that, been playing that lyre for almost as long, I think. And I, <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? I brought the lyre down. You did. I saw that. I did because it's a pitch to tune. But Kim and I, I, I thought the lyre was great, and I got one. But then Kim came over and picked it up, and just sounded so great playing it, just tinkling away. So there's a, a church nearby here that has um, a golden fish on the top of it. And um, the stained glass window here, maybe, can I turn it around to show the window? Yeah. I don't know whether it'll show up because there's a lot of light. No, it won't show it up won't show it. too much light. Yeah, but the stained glass window is the golden fish. And that that clock has four different times on it. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a square tower, so yeah. it has four different clocks. And uh, on on the clocks each one is saying a different time because i don't think they're they're very good at keeping time yeah so it's called the four liars yeah. uh, i the church or the tower is called the four liars the four, the four liars so after we got this liar i thought that i said to kim you get a liar and then we'll find however many people it doesn't have to be four but we could have a liar band and be the four liars. But we never did that. anything about that. That was over a year ago. We'd have to have five liars because we'd be total liars then. Yeah, total liars. <laughs> well, there's there's like there's a there's a definite connection between secrets and lies. There is indeed. Mm. But I suppose it's like it always makes me think of if if you if you don't want lies, don't ask the question. Yeah. <laughs> Don't ask the question. As my mother used to say, I don't need to know everything. I know. <laughs> Sometimes you don't want to. Yeah. Now, oh, this is one. Oh, so they've given their name, but I won't, I won't give it to you. Tengo una pecha en los huevos. Eggs? I have a freckle in the eggs. I don't know whether that's a good Google translation, Sarah Jane. Is that a good Google translation? think that perhaps it's a freckle on a particular male part that may look slightly oh, like eggs. I was just thinking as eggs, like, you know, so <laughs> very nice having freckle. You know, the freckly eggs are very pretty, but I don't think that's what he meant. <laughs> Indeed not. But that, so, but that is, that, that's, you know, I think a lot of our secrets are body secrets. Yeah, I actually well, have a related secret to this. So when I was in primary school, 
I've got a, a freckle on my uh, right breast. It's really, really large and it's really near to my nipple. And I remember getting changed for PE and a group of girls looking at me and saying, you're never going to be able to have babies because you have a fat fanny and you have a freckle on your boob so you can't breastfeed. And so oh, I no. had I had <laughs> huge body issues about specifically having the freckle on my boob for years until you know I realized oh. actually it wasn't going to cause a problem. <laughs> Oh God, girls can be mean so to anybody, but children sometimes can be so mean. It's a bit Lord of the Flies, isn't it? Yeah, it very much is. Yeah, and it sticks. Yeah, it, it stuck for such a long memory. time. Mm. I'd say I'm very lucky. I don't think in, in my school people really used it. I mean, there was other stuff that got sort of said and done, but I don't actually remember particularly anybody having a go at anybody about the way they looked it just it just didn't seem to I had I had I, I had a teacher in grade eight in Canada Mr. Taylor and he was he was awful at the end of the year he did he did like a like a like a zine for us where like he 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 drew caricatures of everyone in the class and then he put like, you know, favorite saying and da, da, da. But some of them were really good, but like some of them were awful and mean and racist. Like I found it and I was just, I couldn't believe that the teacher sent us away. Like after, like we graduated grade eight, we were going off to high school. How old and is that? That would have been 1983. No, I mean, how old is that? Sorry, I'm not sure what grade eight is. It would have been 13, 14. But, oh yeah. And he was just like ridiculing, like one guy had big lips and he made fun of that. He, and the character he drew of this guy with his lips, it was just Mr. Taylor, Mr. Taylor. <laughs> and I guess like yeah. in that era, they think it's okay. Or it's kind of funny. Like it's interesting to see when you're looking at television shows, you know, what comedy works and what doesn't, you know, that, that's lasted the test of time. Yeah. You know, for me, I sort of like I still love some of the Ealing Studios things, you know, like Kind Hearts and Coronets and things. Yeah. Um, whereas some of them, they're just so dated and kind of cringeworthy, really. Mm. And I think like we all thought that was funny at the time. How could we have? But yeah. we did. Yeah. Right. Do you know what his one of me was? A goody two shoes. With oh. a big bow in my hair, which I always thought that's not really me either. Thanks, mate. Yeah. <laughs> well, I never got that. I never even got to be made prefect. I was too naughty. Well, all I've got now is Tango Huevos. So it give me eggs. Your man has still got his eggs. Yeah. But nothing else. John, will you choose another one, please? Another one. Okay. Choose another one. Find a good one there. Find a good one. I am jealous of my housemate who is moving in with her boyfriend tomorrow. She is moving in with the love of her life after having lost track of him for years. Oh, that sounds like the other half of the one that we read. Yeah. First, doesn't it? Oh. I am jealous because I'm so many years younger and would like to skip to seven years from now so I can get to be with the guy I can't get over now. Wow. Oh. You kind of feel that pain as well. You do. Wow. That's beautiful and sad. Um, yeah. Like most of us actually don't want to get older at all. I'm sorry, but bits yeah. fall off and things stop working. No, you don't want to be seven years older if you can hold on to being younger and fitter for a bit longer. Yeah. But I would like the experience of what you know now. Yeah. Yeah. Is it yeah. that saying of youth is wasted on the young? It certainly is. Yeah. Oh, that's. Oh, look, you know, if this is yours and you're watching, I give you a big hug because that's a very painful place to be. Yeah. And I wouldn't yeah. want to go back there. Yeah. Out you go. We'll take your heart there. Mm -hmm. 
I think as well, something like this is really relatable, you know, for everybody. You feel when you're in oh. that moment that nobody else could possibly understand how much pain you're in. Um, and then, yeah, the more that you live, the older you get, I guess, the more that you see and feel you know other people going through exactly that same thing at different points in their life yeah and like you know when you're younger you're so like you're, you're unconfident and you just think you know there's something wrong with me why can't I be and then after a while you just realize look you know some people like you know like some people like sports some people like the theater it, you know you just got to find the right person for you it isn't because of you but sometimes it's a hard place to be. It really is. Yeah, it's horrible. But also there's like an element of um, growth and kind of metamorphosis and, you know, there's there's a silver lining, there's a positivity that eventually there comes is. out of it. You kind of can't wait for, you can understand them wanting to fast forward because there comes that moment where you can almost laugh at yourself at these things and you say, oh goodness, I really took myself so seriously or I really, you know, I really was absolutely bowled over by this person. And maybe just, you actually almost might miss the intensity of emotion that you used to get at that sort of age as well. Yeah, I think I think that, sorry, go on. When, when you're younger, you feel things so much more, you know, you just, uh, you just do because you, I guess it's the first time you've had those emotions. So you feel it more. So are you going to say? I don't know. I'm just, I'm sat here now with my mouth open going, what was I going to say? <laughs> like, I obviously had something really important because <laughs> I interrupted you. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, um, my but, no, I can't, I can't remember. Really? It's like those moments where you go into the next room and then you can't remember what you went in for. Yeah, super annoying. Very annoying. Maybe that's where you find time. It is. <laughs> it is in little pots somewhere. Yeah. Right. So this It would be awesome. really lovely, Kimling, to see um the the secrets a bit closer as well. If that's okay. Sure, let me see if I can get a table across and then hopefully have it at a level where it's more visible. Is that... I, I just meant so that we could see for a minute, you don't have to go to oh. the trouble of furniture removal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just so, so that we can see the stitching and the colours and how it's coming together. It's starting to build up there, so we've got lots of sort of hearts, emotions, and then... Actually, it's kind of interesting as well because of the colours, you know, sort of reflecting off each other as well as you move it round, which I like. Yeah. So we should get a few more on there anyway. Right. So your turn. My turn. I am going to have another, a blue or a green one, I think. What's this? Uh, one of my siblings walked in on me while I was masturbating. You should have kept the door locked, so. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. That's never happened to me. How many, do you have a lot of siblings? I have two sisters. Are they sort of like, is your family one of these families that's, walk into each other's rooms no. quite regularly or knock no. on the door but I had a family that I had a friend growing up and her parents used to walk around naked in front of them and they used to all walk around naked the house together and have baths together huh is that saving water I have no idea but I always thought it was really weird and now it <laughs> seems a little bit even more weird looking back on it I don't know but maybe it's yeah people I'm sure that that happened I mean, I I'm always far too cold for that kind of yeah. thing. <laughs> so, like, just doing that, I don't, you know, especially not here in Northern Europe, like, I, I can't imagine myself doing that because it's just too cold. Yeah. But, um, 
yeah I'm not worried about sort of like bodies and things you know yeah. I don't we all have one luckily mm. so you know it's it's not something but what it is is like uh I have a more sort of Asian family in which um the attitude is you can walk into anyone or anywhere really? it's everybody other members of the family are extended family you know extensions of yourself yeah so it doesn't really matter there's no knocking on the doors there's just sort of like walking in on people or actually usually to be honest that's the, the main thing is um talking to each other from different rooms <laughs> in loud voices you know but say like you know um could you come here and like are you free or anything there's no sort of asking whether somebody's available the assumption is they're available for you which is a big sort of like difference with my husband's family who are always very discreet and will always ask you know can you do this are you available or whatever my family there's no sort of there's almost a shock if you aren't able to do something so but but I told I told your auntie such and such that you'll do this for them so but you didn't ask me before telling them <laughs> And my my mom was particularly bad with opening up letters that was addressed to you addressed to me I remember my father going mad and she was going but you know I can read them father. <laughs> my father's going no you can't they're not addressed to you this is something that at the minute I'm experiencing quite a lot um for those of you just to put it in context for those of you that don't know um in March 2022 I had COVID and since then I've been really sick and I caught COVID when I was working in the UK um and because I was so sick this meant that actually I lived back in the UK for the majority of the past year um which is like a reversal of my usual like normally I live in Lanzarote and spend some time in the UK but yeah, for the past sort of 15 or 16 months, I've been living in the UK and coming out to Lanzarote occasionally. Um, and when I am in Lanzarote, my mum opens all of my medical stuff. And she's like, oh, but I like I don't want you to miss anything because you're seeing so many specialists. And, you know, it's really important that you keep seeing people and you go to your appointments. And like it is and I understand that but it feels like such an invasion of privacy and I know she's only trying to help but I yeah it just makes me really uncomfortable <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised like it is slightly naughty though because I'm sure she knows like <laughs> she's curious as well but but probably also um she wants to be reassured herself you know and she can't hold on until you've actually seen it she wants to know for herself what the worst news is. Well, the thing is that most of it, in fact, all of it is just, it's appointments and confirmations and like results and things like that are all done face-to-face -face or over the telephone. So it's not like she's going to get any juicy information and she knows that. And I know that. I know that she's only opening, you know, your next appointment with Dr. So-and-so is this date. But still, it makes me feel really like, violated is so ridiculous <laughs> but I do I feel like oh my god <laughs> yeah it's totally crazy. understandable totally my my mom would have no no compunction in doing that she really would have. is that a readable one sometimes they're very difficult to read the handwriting do you know we don't do handwriting anymore well I don't much and my handwriting was never up to much Okay, I finish work every day at 4.30, but my wife of 30 years thinks I finish at 6 p.m. So I get an hour in the Gulf? Something, it does, does it say for fun? Golf course. Golf course. Ah. So I get an hour, of course it's golf course. So I get it, I thought it said golf cart. I'm like, what's he doing in the golf cart? <laughs> so I get an hour on the golf course for fun. A naughty little brat <laughs> naughty why would you why would you so he thinks his wife would disapprove of him playing golf every day oh she, he probably doesn't want to get roped into other jobs there's a sort of like oh poor you you've been working till 6 30 actually he's been out having great fun little brat yeah <laughs> 
It's actually the, the French have a term, a little sans cassette. It usually means that they're going off to see the mistress before um, coming back home for dinner. <laughs> but, there's, but this isn't a country where people go to the golf course very often. I don't know. Is it? Yes, it's got loads of, hasn't it got loads of golf courses? I don't know. It's, um, I thought it was famed for golf courses. But like that's that you could spend like an hour and a half at within range of Cork City. Is You're there? talking to me. I couldn't even get the golf club to connect to the ball. <laughs> <laughs> you know? yeah. I'm so useless at those kind of sports. Yeah. I absolutely cannot. I remember being taken out once for golfing yeah. and I could see the frustration because they thought they'd be on sort of like on the first, what do you call those things? The first ball, the first course, the, the first, first hole? runway. Hole? No. First green. hole. Green? First yeah one of those things I mean, here's one that's sealed i think you should do this as oh well. i shall do that yeah there's a couple that are sealed so Literally. these people know that it is so i want to look that, at them all now ah oh, but that's the thing yeah it's actually even worse having to stitch into it then yeah because you know what it says inside yeah but mm -hmm. yeah between five and seven is the usual sort of like that it was the very sort of like um french accepted practice sort of in the time of you know like the the alain delon era mm. sort of 60s sort of thing it was just expected mm. that the guys would go off and see their mistress at that time i hope the women went too mm? i hope that the women went too I'm not that sure it wasn't about that. It wasn't just a male thing. Like, you know, if he gets a mistress, then maybe I want one too. <laughs> mm -hmm. No, I, I think that I think the women would get uh, plumbers in, to be honest. Like, um, it'd be a bit like Lady Chattersley's lover. I did actually meet a plumber once who said that they'd um, they'd always dreamed about that. And then when it actually happened, he was so frightened. He ran off and left all his, his tools and he... He was too afraid to go back and get <laughs> Poor guy. <sighs> but yeah, so I think it was very difficult for women at the time, you know, because there was no financial freedom. I think once you tie people down with like, uh, so like house and family, but no financial freedom, um, it, it is a real stranglehold. Ah, oh, the translation of that is estrangulamiento, which I absolutely love. The, the translation that just came up of stronghold was estrangulamiento. Ooh, it's <laughs> like stranglehold. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's the next one going in. Just love the idea of a, like a little washing line, like we've yeah. washed the secrets and they're out to dry in the wind. Yeah, I was saying, I was thinking yesterday, you could bring it to different different establishments. I'll do this one. And each establishment could have its own clothesline of secrets. Well, I'm not sure whether I'm going to be able to do this. I might have to give it a little stabbing with a yeah. pair of scissors. It might be quite hard to stitch into I think in that right. case we'll try one out pink paper you think we'll pink be at paper. least allowed to actually have a look at the few words I've got here yes I think we can do that so would that be cheating you make the rule <laughs> it just says <gasps> just says I love you that's so, so sweet oh. that's not something to help but it might have a name in there, so we shall keep that name hidden. Oh, the odds that you would have ripped it right like that. You could have ripped it anywhere. Isn't that nice? Everyone look at it again. That's really gorgeous. It is. It's really gorgeous. And it's I like, love that you took just that piece, you know, when you yeah. ripped it and that's what's come out. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Um, did you ever get those Love Heart sweets? 
in in Canada. Do you did you have them it's like in the UK after? Because they're something I remember from like being a teenager. So they'd be like the little sherbety sweets, and they have messages on them, like you know, yeah, um, be mine. Yes, that kind of thing. Yeah, we had them, and in fact, we have love heart fridge magnets <laughs> right now. <laughs> <laughs> I actually they they have something something about them it's not just the colors but it's it's really nice the um the the combination of colors but the um the type the text type mm. is really nice yeah yeah it reminds me of old print setting type you know mm. um and, but in the circle instead of being in a square makes it like really special because then you can't really use it in that way you couldn't really set it as type you know but yeah it's yeah that's what I like about not it. even a circle it's a heart shape but I guess yeah I wonder how they do that no I think if the anybody... sweets in England were a circle but they had a heart printed on them like raised. Oh, yeah you're right you are right yeah but I wonder whether they had sort of like specific dyes made out of um you know like so that they sort of form press is almost like you know tablets would have a press mm. um but you would compact the sweets into that shape and you'd have that whatever it is whether you can change the text type out or you just got a die made with those particular words but imagine working in this like in the love heart factory i think we're going to bring out a new range of sweets which will add, add this do they have to modernize you know sort of like you know the language what what would you use for sort of like terms of endearment when you're in the 70s and would that still work for people in the 80s and 90s? Yeah, sometimes terms of endearment actually become the opposite and, you know, can be a little bit offensive. I always think about how when I used to watch kind of really stylized movies and, um, yeah, from back in the day and, and the you know, these kind of really suave fellas with their hair all kind of brill creamed back would call oh, their yeah. girlfriends Tiny dolls suits. you know and now yeah. if if somebody what they dolls dolls yeah hey doll like it's a really <laughs> kind yeah. of americanized 50s sort of thing but it was really popular and you know if somebody that suave had called you a doll then you would oh, do a little swoon and go oh, okay but I think that you know particularly now if a bloke called me a doll I'd be like I'm sorry what <laughs> like an but, inanimate, yeah, inanimate idealized so, object nope it depends on how it says I always used to love the thing of you know where you sort of travel around the UK if you're in, um, for example, if you're in Scotland, do you know Rabsty Nesbitt and he'd always be saying Mary Hen? And then um, in, in the Midlands, it would be duck. And then like in Liverpool, it was chicken. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, I chicken. love that. I love that chicken. too. I'd almost forgot about that. I went to university in Liverpool and yeah, chicken. Oh, it's a great bad. city, isn't it? Yeah, oh, it's you know what? It's my favorite city in the UK. Without, oh, without, I love it. I think it's fab, absolutely fab. And the other one that you mentioned, Duck, um, like where I live in the UK, bowls over. It's um in ex mining town, but it's right. Is it uh, anywhere near Derby? Yeah, it's really near Derby. It's in Derby. I should know that. I used to like work between Coventry and and uh, and not Nottingham. Oh, well, Derby. Yeah, duck. Yeah. Derby. And that's, they used to say duck. Yeah. But what I, I love I, about duck in particular is that everybody says it to everybody. You know, it's not gendered. So yeah. men will say it to each other. Women will say it to men and women. Like, I really like that because a lot of terms of endearment are, are gendered, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm not about that, but that's true. Yeah. What does your yellow card say? Uh, this one says, at times I think I'm racist and I don't want to be or see myself in that way. Oh, mm. well, that's the first, first step. That's the first, that's the first step. Yeah. Like yeah. You, can, you can only make a start. Yeah. We all need to unpack. And, and get better with practice. Yeah. Like your mandolin. 
yeah. which, which you've done much better than I've done with my lion. That's <laughs> all I can say. I'm very impressed. Yeah, I think you should play the lyre there, Kim. Oh, no, no, I'm stitching. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a go at the stitching. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I think I'll stick to stitching. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> I think you want me to go on the liar so that you can see how bad I am. <laughs> You'll be mocking me next. I never would. Mm. Mm. I'd be mocking me. Mm. But yeah, it's the kind of thing, it's like a hard thing about. But it, like people, like a lot of the times, but this person is, is a, this person has some awareness around it, which is, which is really great. Um, That's exactly like, what I was thinking. Like it, yeah. it shows um a level of self-awareness which like you yes. say is the first step and actually yeah. now we're so lucky because 10 years ago it was really difficult if you had that level of self-awareness it was actually really difficult to educate yourself and to find out yeah. how to um change your views or how to learn more about it or what you could do to be an ally but now mm. there's so much content out there, like online, but also books, podcasts, films, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. But, but it's brought to the fore. I mean, like when we were younger, we were the only mixed kids in the village. Everybody knew who were, we were, but like we didn't know who they were. And uh, sometimes it was kind of like, do you remember the other night somebody came in? Yes, and said, I was um, just about to where, say that. Where are you from? Where are you from? Well, he said to you, are you, are you English to you? And yeah. you said, you said yes. And he went, oh, fair play. Fair enough or something like that. And then he said to Kieran, are you English? And Kieran said, no, are you? And he goes, oh God, no. <laughs> and it was like, <laughs> fuck you. And then he turned to me and he said, where are you from? That's not a Cork accent. Where are you from? And I was in the middle of pouring a drink for him and his, the people he was with. And I said, I live here. And he said, but where are you from? And I said, again, I live here. And then he leaned in over the counter and said, where are you from? <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you're not getting this drink. You could get out right now. And it was actually great because like, I would have asked him to like, cause then even after he said that to you, I was like, why am I pouring the guy this drink? Yeah. Like the fact that he, could come in and he and then he said to me I'm just being friendly he was like he, he was so confused why are you not serving me I'm just being friendly but it's he like, didn't actually say it in a very friendly manner yeah but but the, that's there's the no awareness is, there none my mom would often say to people where are you from but she's she's looking to find out have I been there is there something in common can I make I mean, a connection it's actually, yeah. yes can I make a connection that's what it's about for yeah her. So, you know, like quite often, it's it's a very difficult question, where yeah. are you from? And I would imagine so for I, you, because you're here in Ireland and you have a... I have an English accent, accent and I and I look I, like I look mixed and I am mixed. You yeah. Know? So um, so when people ask you, where are you from? I don't know what they're looking for. Yeah. So I say, what do you mean, where are you from? And people are looking at me and go, that's a simple question, isn't it? And you're thinking, no, it isn't. Yeah. I don't know what... You, is it because the way I look or is it because the way I, I sound or speak or is it just because you're new? Maybe they're asking me, do I live locally or do I live in another city? I yeah. don't know what they're looking yeah. for. So. Yeah. Yeah. And then on top of that is what they're looking for. And do I want to give them that information? That's it. That's <laughs> you it. Know? You know, and, and nobody nobody has any right to our personal information. Yeah, and you know, at the beginning, I would give it all away. Like when people would ask me, I'd feel like I, you know, I owed for the, but like for the price of a pint, you don't need to know. Yeah, you don't need to know this. Uh, yeah, but so. it's okay. It's okay if people are chatting. But when he said he was friendly, being friendly, he he wasn't, he wasn't actually. Friendly. But yeah. he, you know, it wasn't to go into a conversation. It was just like, oh yeah, yeah, I can box you. I yeah. can box you. Yeah, I can box you. <laughs> yeah. And by saying like he was just being friendly that's full-on gaslighting you know full like on gaslighting. yeah yeah <laughs> like it, gaslighting. it is isn't it like no you're the person people. with the problem not me and it's like well actually I'm so, like it's lovely to hear how you held your line though Maureen that's awesome oh I was totally impressed totally like I, like <laughs> I, and that, like I've been doing this now for almost five years with a break for the pandemic but like and I had a real vision for what I wanted it to be and it was like such such tough going like when I look back now and it's still a bit tough going because I, I'm a bit like you never know who's going to walk in the door and you know if they're going to get it or if they're not going to get it but like now it's just it's so full of lovely people those things still happen but at the beginning I would be like 
so much of investing so much emotional energy in people who just had zero awareness but i think now you've got that sort of like regular clientele i think a lot of people were kind of concerned that if you hadn't asked them to go i think people would <laughs> and that's just it because it's protecting the room and the people in the room yeah like it really and you know and 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 then that makes it so easy you know why would i wreck the vibe for everybody else by letting this person in for the price of a pint it's not worth it definitely not worth it it's lovely to hear how seriously it's lovely to hear how seriously you um take the responsibility of holding space you know and looking after for the people that are in that space that's oh you do incredible Absolutely you do yeah yeah that's a privilege that's it. it's a it's just it's a total privilege and i was so really heartened to see the reaction of people to this i was as well do you know really? there was such a like i think people got a lot out of it like the people who they they, they thought a lot about what they were going to put in the box yeah, you know? some somebody said, I've got loads of secrets. I said, yeah. Oh, pop them in the box. Oh, oh no, no, I'm not gonna do that if they're not gonna be if they're going to be read out. I said, put them in the box in an envelope. Yeah. <laughs> Your turn to pick Is it now. my turn? Yeah. Okay. Let's let's try. I'll pick one of these. <laughs> oh yeah. Soy polysexual. Um, I was I was trying to work out what this means. Um, I was wondering whether, because like if, if homosexual was a single, you know, like single gender yeah. and hetero is kind of like the other gender and then poly means there are lots of genders, I suppose. But then it's like looking at things like, um, you know, I was mentioning like poly tunnels, you know, how, yeah. we, how we sort of like appropriate words and half past them over you know like mm. polytunnel it wouldn't be multiple tunnels you know like it's polythene tunnel so mm. I was thinking you know, whatever they're up to mm. well look you know consenting adults get yourself checked out regularly that's all I can say but wouldn't polysexual sexual doesn't necessarily mean that you're having sex you could still be polysexual without having sex I would imagine yeah that's true yeah that's true yeah but I don't know what it what it means. Um, sort of like, is it? Uh, I am currently googling Anyone? this. So, um, a polysexual. This is a definition coming from dictionary dot com. A polysexual person is someone who is sexually and slash or romantically attracted to multiple genders. It is not the same as being bisexual or pansexual, although all of these sexualities involve being attracted to more than one gender. It is also not the same as being polyamorous. Oh, now I'm totally confused, right? Yeah. So pansexual and polysexual are different things, but like pan is, usually means world, doesn't it? World, yeah. like pandemic or pan Pangea. panorama or whatever. It's, uh, what's Pangea? Oh, Pangea is a place, isn't it? Is a, yeah, yeah yeah so I'm, I'm going down to try and find like the difference how is polysexuality different from pansexuality a polysexual person is not attracted to all genders pansexuality refers to a person that is attracted to all genders and different from bisexual in that bisexual presumes just two genders mm. Yes, I presume so, although that is not part of the official dictionary definition. But yes, I would assume. That's interesting. Because bisexual kind of is based in the binary, isn't it, of gender? Binary, yeah, mm. two. It means two, isn't it? So you have to choose your two. If you're bisexual, you have to choose which two genders you want. <laughs> <laughs> After that, you're not allowed any more. Mm. Whereas a poly can, can choose more poly genders. Poly would seem more accurate, wouldn't it? Yeah, I'd say so. Mm. I think, yeah, that maybe bisexual is an older term, you know, coming yeah. from a time where gender was seen as binary, whereas mm. now it's seen as a spectrum. And mm. so perhaps that's a term that is going to not be used pretty soon. I don't know. Yeah, that makes sense. It's interesting how language sort of progresses and sort of like moves along a little bit so that you know, things, old concepts sort of drop out with, or language words drop out with, with the way we, we have our concepts and our, and like, I always sort of thought like jobs are the same, you know, certain jobs aren't, 
aren't going to be valid anymore so it's like old jobs that are no longer valid as sort of things like joust maker or um you know I, I can't think of any others like host maker. <laughs> well you know like you, you wouldn't be doing jou- making jousts much anymore whereas like I'm sure during the medieval times there were loads of joust makers it's true it's like just quite an quite an amusing example <laughs> but yeah it's true <laughs> so I've now gone further into this and I am on wikipedia and you see this is why we should never presume because actually pansexual is different to what we presumed so omnisexuality is a sexual orientation where um, you can be attracted to all genders which is confused with pansexuality but it's distinctly different to being pansexual because if you are pansexual then you're attracted to people regardless of their sex or gender oh okay so hang on pansexual is Sorry, say that again. Pansexual is the one that's regardless of the sex or gender. Yes, and omnisexual is attracted to all genders. Ah. Mm. Which is what I have always presumed pansexual meant. We educate ourselves. This is, this is not just as like a, an event at the Lacuna International Arts mm. Festival. It's total, total education for me. It <laughs> is, me too. I think there's always space to learn, isn't there? And I love that. Mm. There is indeed. It's... Oh, are we running over time? Yeah. You are, yes. but I mean, you seem to be having... Secrets. Look at them, look at them, look at them. <laughs> oh, there's so many. Stitching, we've got all these left to stitch. So I would actually like to say thank you very much for everyone who contributed to, to the secrets. I will be stitching them. And I will be putting them onto here as well so that we'll have a whole sort of like stack. Oh, left to right, right to left. There you are. Uh, we we'll, should have a whole stack of these just sitting on the base there, um, hanging out to dry. Do you think that once you have completed the project that you could take some photos or a video or some documentation of the 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 secrets and then we can share that so that people can see what what happened you know in the end absolutely so when I finished all this these pieces and things I would absolutely do that yeah brilliant um if people are interested I'd be delighted yeah so um and yeah I'll send I'll take photos of these once once the light's a little bit better send them over to you oh yeah I know what I was going to say is um we had a thought last night I I don't know um whether Dennis mentioned it to you but in this pub there is uh a camera surveillance camera and we said that would be really funny to actually have oh yeah have footage of the surveillance camera of us doing this alongside so it's secretly watching secret notes oh very good very good (laughs) Would you be up for that then, Sarah Jane? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, and with all of the evidence, you could perhaps, or we could collaborate and perhaps come up with, you know, like some sort of video product, you know, that's more than just the, the direct recording. We could put in some of the photos, we could put in some of the chat perhaps, because there's been a bit of chat happening in the chats on Zoom, as well as the the video from um from the security footage it's yeah it's kind of a multi-layered experience oh it is it is I'm delighted and thank you thank you so much for the opportunity and I'm actually really looking forward to seeing the other events that are on at the Lacuna Festival yeah it looks amazing it 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 does yeah and like another year I am really hoping next year like I can get to go because like I'll, I'll so go with you. oh brilliant I <laughs> no, there you oh, go you managed to get yourself two gallery spaces out there that's absolutely fabulous and you've got like two physical exhibitions is that right yeah that's right um one of them is in a um, really beautiful Canarian house that has been transformed into an art gallery um, and run by Luce, who is a, a local here, who, you know, born and bred in Lanzarote. Um, so that's really interesting. 
And then what's really nice about that space as well, actually, is that it's a weekend space. And so it has these really late opening hours. It's open from 12 noon until 10 at night. And she has a bar. So it's great just to go and kind of hang out and enjoy the art, but also enjoy being around other creatives, which is it's just really lovely. And then nice. other space is a socio-cultural centre um, in the capital city in Arecife. Um, and it is um, it's one room that's been specifically kind of transformed into an art gallery with a professional hanging system and professional lighting and a stage. Um, and it's like this kind of multi-arts hub, I suppose. Um, and there's a cultural association um, that are based there, that have their studios there. Um, so it's a really lovely in community space, you know? Um, so yeah, quite different spaces, um, but they sort of complement each other. Oh, that sounds Absolutely. amazing. I, I'm hoping to see it next year. Yeah. And I hope you don't mind. I just wanted to say one more thank you. I want to say thank you to the Arts Council because I did get the Agility Award and that's helped me develop some, it's given me the time to be able to just develop some work and some ideas and things. So if I didn't have that and I was having to constantly do a full-time day job, I would, wouldn't have had the headspace to be able to sort of come up with this. So just a thank you for, to the uh, Arts Council of Ireland. Do you want to just say a little bit more about that in case there are artists um, either live now or watching the recording who think, oh, maybe that's something that I could apply for? Oh, uh, absolutely. So twice a year um, at the moment. So this year, the Arts Council of Ireland, um, you, you need to be a resident in Ireland, I think, mm -hmm. um, to be able to apply for it. But uh, they have what's called an agility award and um, it's it's up to 5,000 and it's to pay for your time to be able to develop projects and um, you just advance in your own work and things. Just, I, I suppose in a, a lot of ways, it's like giving you peace of, peace of mind or certain tranquility so that you could actually be able to go away and make work and not constantly worrying about the bills and things. Um, so they do that and they also do a bursary award which is a little bit more substantial and um, for that you know they need to see that you're actually sort of creating work and and developing on ideas and projects and things so um, I, I do think we've been um, very lucky here for the last I'd say two or three years but um, we have had a lot of support from the Arts Council, I think, especially compared to when I see other other countries and uh, what they they get. I think we, we get a lot of general support and a lot of support, particularly for emerging and mid-career artists, not just the well-known ones. And um, I think uh, I was going to say something else about it, I've forgotten. It is, it is. The next one's not till next January though, the next round is yes. not till so, January so 2024. You get that twice a year. Twice a year, yeah. and, the, and the last one was just last, in the last couple of weeks, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so we had to, had to finish the um, application there. Yeah. But it is worth it, it's worth putting that in. Mm -hmm. Ah yeah, the other thing I was going to say was that, um, I'm del delighted to say that in Ireland, they, they are trying, trialing the, um, universal wage for artists so um out of I think about 28,000 people applied about two and a half or three thousand yeah. got it by just by random application Lottery, yeah so uh what which means then uh for those who actually got it they're kind of our flagship and we're, we're sort of hoping that they will show to the government that getting this kind of funding um to be an artist means that then you can actually go away and you can create um, again without sort of, it's not a huge amount, but it is a sort of a basic salary so that you can go away and create without having to worry about getting a second job or, mm -hmm. you know, particularly as the prices have gone up so much, you know, rental prices have gone up so much in Ireland. So it is, it is um, a thing to watch. I think they've had one year or one and a half years out of the three-year trial mm -hmm. so you know like in in a couple of years we'll see what comes out of it but fingers crossed that the government actually sees this as a positive move because I think particularly with AI um, which will be taking away a lot of the smaller jobs and things 
um, we're going to have to stop thinking about jobs being the only means of getting um, funding or, my, or getting a means to exist because you know more and more of us are going to have that that possibility taken away from us so yeah, yeah I remember when that first was in the news about the living wage for artists and it I mean it really struck me as being you know it has the potential to be totally revolutionary for for artists but also for the for the country you know like imagine having funded artists like your cultural scene it, it should be absolutely banging you know <laughs> like it could be really cool yeah so fingers crossed that that is um yeah getting the results and the across the one board one. not just visual artists but performance music all sorts so mm. uh, you know theater I'm just hoping that across the board you know like Ireland will see a small explosion from the people who've actually got funding and um this will create encouragement so we'll see fingers crossed um, thank you both so much for your time and energy and for sharing your skills and expertise um, in music and sewing, in art and creating and connecting and in so many other ways. Um, it's been a really beautiful experience and we have got lots of messages in the chat, messages of support saying how much fun it is and how enjoyable it's been, how relaxing oh, it's brilliant. been. Um, so I will save that and um, send it over to you as well. Oh, please so do, got, thank you yes, very much. You've got that and thank as you for anybody mm. who's taken the time to, yeah. to stop in and watch, we, we really appreciate it. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. see you. Bye.